Oh, you went and cracked out the bold lipstick for this video. Well, hi everyone, it's Jenny. Welcome back to my channel. How are you all? Hope you're doing well. I could swear down that I filmed a June wrap up, but obviously I did not. <laughs> I went to find the footage and it just wasn't there because I didn't film it. So it's happening now, late as usual. And because I did not film a mid month wrap up, I'm going to try and be quick about this because there's 19 books to talk about, which isn't that many for me at the moment this year, but it, it, it's enough and let's be honest I'm very good at rambling so let's get to it. The first book that I read, well one of the books that I read was Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck which I'm, Steinbeck? Steinbeck, which I'm very happy to have read because I hadn't read anything by him before and it's often studied but I studied Kate Mockingbird instead and it was great. I mean it was a four star read I think because it hasn't been killed for me and it's so well known that I hardly want to say what it's about but it's about George Milton and his friend Lenny Small who is disabled because he was kicked in the head by a horse when he was young and it's their kind of American dream to own land one day of their own while they are migrant workers that are travelling around California kind of casually working um, during the Great Depression because it came, this came out in the 30s. It, it was good. I had already had the ending spoiled for me though so not much else to say but I still enjoyed it. I think the writing is really good and I am excited, excited even to read some of his more hefty works like The Great Wrath which I've had on my shelf for a few years now. Then I have another kind of American modern classic and that is, oh what is that on my arm? Sorry, that is The Colour Purple by Alice Walker and this was wonderful. It's episodic novel which is a format of writing that I really enjoy and it's from the perspective of Celie who at the beginning of the book is a 14 year old uneducated poor black girl and it's a lot about well it spans 40 years of her life so it's a lot about how she develops as a person. It's really about how she finds hope. She writes a lot of the letters to God partly because of the negative male father figure that she has in her life who abuses her. I have to say massive trigger warnings for rape and sexual abuse in this book. It's there right from the very first letter I think. I was quite shocked by that but it's wonderful because it's about women. There are so many strong female characters and there's a real sisterhood in this novel and it, that was really touching to read because there's so many women so developed and that was one of the biggest appraisals of this book was how well written the female characters were and it's really a lot about finding stuff losing faith finding it again and in how you empower yourself when you come from very damning circumstances and it was just really beautiful it's a book i would definitely reread probably in not too long a time does that make sense then I have a graphic novel which I loved and that is The Handmaid's Tale. Well, inspired by and taken from Margaret Abbott obviously but by, what is her name, Renee Nolt. And it's beautiful, it is the whole book. Can you see this? Hello. And it's just a wonderful colour scheme. I really like how the scenes that are set in Gilead with the Republic after all of the changes have been restricted and women have been confined in the world how all those scenes are kind of very black and white and red and then when it switches to reminiscing about before all of this happened with the government it's in colour so it was just really subtle and clever and in the way that it illustrated the novel and I just thought it was very very wonderful because I love this book so if it's a graphic novel <laughs> of the book and it's very accurate and close to the book then obviously I was going to love this. Then I have an American classic which is The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain which I didn't really enjoy. I don't have much to say about this, it's just an adventure story of Huckleberry Finn and his slave friend is Jim. It's just a kind of adventure story of Huckleberry Finn going on adventures with Jim and there's, there's an interesting thing about slavery in there but it's, it just wasn't for me. I have nothing else to say about this. Then I read a memoir by Deborah is it Levy or Levy? I, I want to say Levy but it probably is Levy and that is The Cost of Living which is about her getting over her divorce from her husband and also about being creative in her process of writing and it was just mesmeric. I loved it. I loved how she writes about the experience of being a woman like I talked about in my wrap up. It was such a joy and she's definitely a new favourite author that I've discovered this year. Then I read an historical fiction novel which has been on my shelf for far too long and that is The Sealed Letter by Emma Donoghue. This was 
really fun to read, partly because it's based on a historical fact as well. It looks at Emily Faithful, who was an activist for women and just women in politics in general, and how she was caught up in the Coddington divorce scandal where her friend Helen was unfaithful to her husband. Shock horror. And it is about their friendship and how people manipulate each other and it was just really juicy and I loved it and the ending was satisfying and it, it was just very socially interesting as well about how even with privilege you still can't have everything that you want and the pressures of society. I, I really really enjoyed this one. The next book is possibly my favourite book of the year so far and that is My Gear of Rest and Relaxation by Otesha Moshveg. This was just in some ways slow moving but I loved it a lot. It does obviously span a year though. This is about a woman who decides following the death of her parents and her undealt with grief to take a lot of pills prescribed by the dodgiest doctor that's got to be around in literature, Dr Tuttle, and avoid the world for a year and have, as it does just, a year of rest and relaxation but obviously it doesn't solve her problems and it's a lot about how you can't avoid the rubbish things in the world and your own feelings and how it's important to deal with those and face what's wrong in your life. It's also got a great character which is her friend Reva who is someone who's a real penchant for dieting and is constantly insecure about her weight and is very materialistic and what she values in life. It was just an interesting examination of privilege for one thing because obviously she has to have a decent amount of money to be able to do this but also just about how mental health cannot just be bought away or cured so easily as just giving someone pills and I thought it was excellent. Then I have A Man Booker Short is the book that I've had again for far too long on my shelf and that is The Garden of Evening Myths by Tan Tuang Eng and this is about a girl who's young Ling who following studying law at Cambridge and prosecuting Japanese war criminals has come back to Northern Malaya where she grew up and has come with the intention of building a garden in memory of her sister. I should say that they are, well she is a survivor of a Japanese war camp because this is set in 1949 so it's quite harrowing in places because it's partly about the present of her building the garden but also the flashbacks of the camp and how you, she escaped and how her sister did not escape. So it's not necessarily a happy read but it again is about the connection to nature and about the importance of healing and what you do with traumatic memories and how you can rebirth yourself or, or remember people in a healthier way and it was just really touching. I loved it. Then I read Warlight by Michael and Dante. This, I can't fault for the writing style on a sentence-by-sentence -sentence basis, but it was a little bit dull and I don't really know what this book was trying to do overall. It is about Nathaniel who narrates the book and his sister Rachel who are pretty much abandoned by their parents post Second World War when they, well his parents moved to Singapore and they're left in the care of a a suspicious character called the Moth who they believe later on is a criminal and it's told over a number of years again there's quite a lot of reminiscing and flashbacks from future years but it just didn't really capture my attention. It's the kind of book that I might reread later and enjoy or not enjoy or I also might keep it on my shelf for another two more years and then decide I don't want it anymore and get rid of it so who knows. But that said I do still want to read more of his writing. Then I have a book that I'm really sad to say disappointed me, and that is Wide Sagasso Sea by Jean Rhys. This is famously a kind of prequel to Jane Eyre from the perspective of a character who is very minor in that book, and that as a premise really excited me, but actually I was disappointed because I found the writing a bit disjointed because it flashes forward a huge amount of years and that was a bit jarring because there was information in between those years that I really would have liked and there was a very short end section where it is kind of in the house in Thornfield from Jane Eyre and I wanted more of that. I kind of wanted her alternative version to what was going on and also it wasn't just, I'm trying not to say who it is because I don't want anyone to spoil for me if they haven't read Jane Eyre but 
it wasn't just from this person's perspective, it was from someone else's perspective, and I didn't care about that person's perspective, that's not why I came to read it, and it's very short. I liked how it was set in the Caribbean, I liked how they captured the climate and the heat there, I thought there were really excellent sections of writing, but as a, as a whole book it wasn't cohesive to me. Then I have a book that I've been recommending to flipping everyone because it hasn't got much press, and I think it's wonderful, and that is Hotel Silence. I'm not going to massacre her name again. It's about a wonderful Icelandic author though and it is about Jonas and how he is going through a tough time. He's sort of hit that midlife crisis point in his life where he feels like his life is falling apart because his wife has left him and it's a lot about him deciding he's going to kill himself because his mental health is so, so bad and he's going to go to a war zone that is undisclosed and kill himself there. And it's about him going to this place and finding and befriending the brother and sister who run this hotel and also the sister's son and how he has suddenly a role to fulfill because he can fix it like a kind of handyman because the hotel is obviously pretty broken down considering there's been a war on and it's just a lot about I keep saying it all the time but he, the importance of human connection and I, and I think that's always a wonderful thing to have in books and the to just kind of emphasise the power of that and I loved how it was it's about mental health and someone recovering from having terrible mental health and, and it's just a wonderful wonderful book and it gave me so much hope and happiness and I just want everyone to read it please and thank you then I have a book that was just such a joy and that was Winnie the Pooh exploring a classic and this was the book from the V&A exhibition at Victorian Art Museum at in London that I went to last year and I haven't read it but it is wonderful because there's lots of interesting information about the creation of Winnie the Pooh and lots of illustrations that E.H. Shepherd did like this and it also talks a lot about how E.H. Shepherd actually didn't draw the original Winnie the Pooh bear that much it was actually his son's bear and how he also modelled Christopher Robin a lot on his son so it, it, it got a lot of interesting tidbits guys but it's not the kind of book I expect anyone to really rush out and buy, so I'm not going to talk about this anymore. Then I have a book I really wanted to read for a long time, and that is Half of a Yellow Sun by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, and it did not disappoint. It was wonderful. It's set in 1960s Nigeria, and that is during the African War period. So it, the book actually started before then, and that surprised me. There's quite a long section in the beginning that isn't during the war, and that I didn't find quite as interesting, but it, obviously it's important to lay groundwork because there's four characters that run throughout this novel and it's just fascinating because it's a war I knew nothing about but it was just incredibly written obviously a bit sad and harrowing at some points again that true warnings but if you're upset by like war or rape or violence or any of that maybe don't read this but it is just so beautifully written and it's the book I, I would know I will reread re re I've seen beautiful editions of it and I really want to get multiple editions of it but I'm you know being good at the moment because books but Oh, it was wonderful. She's probably one of my favourite authors. I think she's one of the few African authors that I could just nail off the top of my head. She is one of the few people who's prominent and I, I think she fully deserves it. She's so wonderful as a writer and as a speaker or activist. She's like life goals. Then I have Cersei by Madeline Miller. I'm very glad to have read this. And I can actually say a bit more about it now <laughs> that I've read it. And it is a book actually that started conversations. Two people on the tube started talking to me about this book. So that is amazing. And it's about Cersei, obviously, who is a nymph daughter to Helios, who's God of the Sun. And it's about her feelings of inferiority growing up compared to her siblings and her parents, and how she gets, oh, I don't want to spoil it, but how, how she moves away from the court and develops her powers as a witch kind of semi-goddess and how she navigates dealing with eternity and how to fill that time and obviously there's a destiny to come into it because there's a lot about prophecy. I liked it because it has lots of kind of tidbits if you're really into Greek mythology if you're not it was still very accessible because I don't know much about Greek mythology and all of those stories but it was a really fun read but the kind of book that I don't know why I couldn't properly get into it for a while but it, I think you can just really sit and read a good chunk of it at a time it's not the sort of book you can easily dip in and out of but it was it was wonderful and it's so shiny whoa am I getting raised? Woo 
then read the Pride of Miss Jean Brode by Muriel Spark. This was great also, the audiobook is delightful. It's narrated by Miriam Margolis and she's great. And it's about a teacher called Miss Jean Brody and her teaching what is called the Brody set, so a group of girls at this school and how she is trying to kind of give them all the information and life experience that she can and she calls it her prime because obviously we all have prime time in our life and it's about how one of the J Jody Brody <laughs> set betray her and again it looks at even though it's such a small but it does look at the Brody set's later lives and you slowly find out who hasn't and then who has betrayed her and it's also about her subsequent decline post the betrayal the betrayal so, so so dramatic but it was it was really good i enjoyed it more than the other book i read by her which is memento mori this was so much better so i will definitely be continuing reading more of her work then the only penguin mini modern that i read last month was dark days by james baldwin to be fair if you're gonna read one this was a good one this is one of the best that i've read so far and i've read 30 of them out of the 50. it is a collection of essays and it was really wonderful to read some of his non-fiction because I've read one of his novels and I loved his writing. But it's just as good in non-fiction form and obviously this is about racism in America and the black experience. It's a really powerful, packs a punch writing, especially because it's, all these three essays are really short but they really get the point across incredibly well and I loved it. I am definitely going to try and read more of his work next year. I'm only just noticing how many American authors I've read this month. It's interesting. And the next one is also an American author. I finally got round to reading Ghost Set of Watchmen by Harper Lee. And you guys, I'm sorry, it was such a disappointment. To be fair, I haven't had anyone really love this book. I do love To Kill a Mockingbird. I think that is a wonderful, wonderful book. This just doesn't match up. It's set quite a few years later. And the thing is about Jean Louise, or, or Scout, you know, To Kill a Mockingbird. I love them as children. I love her as a child. I love her brother as a child. I love Dill. But when they're grown up, I'm just not interested in her grown up. I have no, I have no desire to think what would she be like in a book 20 years later. I don't care. <laughs> and this is that. This is her going back and suddenly seeing her father Atticus Finch in a whole new light and seeing he's a hypocrite and challenging him on that and just seeing where she lives in Macon County is somewhere that isn't as idyllic as when she grew up and, and it's um it's a, it's not even okay do you know what this is just i just didn't rate this in any way i really didn't i'm sad to say that i'm really sad but it wasn't great there was a, a, an argument at one point between two characters that i just thought was really so coppery and i hated it i didn't hate the book overall i just really didn't enjoy it then I have a book that I had to read in June, and that was Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf, which is the first one I've read by her. I can't believe I haven't read it before, as you can see behind me, somewhere, here, yes, here. I have a lot of her books, and I'm, oh, sorry, my mouse fell. Also, this is Jenny Wren from I'm Not Your Friend. My mum made me that, because she was making loads of mice, and I kept calling them Dickens characters, so this is Jenny Wren she's my favourite character from Dickens obviously and that's my favourite Dickens book anyway sorry the version this is about Clarissa D Dalloway and it's really set in a day in June which is hence reading it last month and it's about her getting ready for a party and the said party but throughout that interwoven is the characters that come to the party and their thoughts about or Mrs Dalloway's thoughts about how I could have gone and reminiscing and I love stuff like that about memory and all about the roads not taken and how decisions affect your life and it was just some of the most beautiful description I've ever read and I'm definitely going to reread this next June I know that you can do a walk because I love how focused on London it is it, it literally details her from buying the flowers at the beginning to walking at home it's, it's just it's so specific, London geography specific I loved that so I really want to read it and then do that walk next year so I'm sure I'll rave about this again next year and the last but not least I read finally had this much up for you as well Down and Out in Paris and London by George Orwell which is a non-fiction kind of memoir I suppose about when he sort of bummed around both these cities to see how 
poverty affected people essentially the paris in paris he worked a lot as a waiter or kind of kitchen boy kitchen porter as you, you would have called it and in london it was just really almost like being a tramp and there's a lot of quite gruesome detail about rats and so forth it was very interesting it's just quite anti-semitic at points and that was a bit uncomfortable especially considering when this was written i mean it was came out in the 30s i sort of understand on some very small level that there was a growing feeling of that generally but it's not very comfortable to read that now but apart from that i can't really fold it i think he's a very good observational writer and i enjoy this a lot it's also pretty funny some of the anecdotes he reports from characters that he met are incredible and some of the people that he meets are a bit like someone out of a dickens novel so it's it's great to see such variety in non-fiction okay hopefully that wasn't half an hour long as usual maybe maybe we only 20 minutes guys that will be an achievement let's be honest what did you read in june let me know if you have a june wrap up and link it down below i'd love to see it and i hope you have a lovely day week month year millennium yeah i will see you soon more bookish shenanigans bye